Hey guys, what's up? Paul Dovecchio here at Tripoli Productions. Um, I'm just going to cover a few things in Adobe Premiere CS4 that stand out to me. Um, as a director who cuts his own pictures, I um, there are certain features in, in Premiere CS4 that stand out to me, so I just want to share a few of those things and some things that I also dislike about Premiere that um, you know I hope that either they improve or you know just like little small things just to help the workflow and help things move quicker. So tune in and enjoy. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that uh, you know when you create a new sequence, um, you can choose the setting for each individual sequence, meaning you know it's not a project setting anymore um, each sequence in the project has its own settings which I think is a great feature because you can start mixing and matching things or you know if you have different types of footage you could just throw it all into um, you know uh, a project that has you know a certain setting and then you can jump to you know DV so you can jump between DV and high def and things like that so that, I always uh, thought that was kinda cool it was a nice little feature in Vegas where you can throw a whole bunch of stuff into one timeline um, and over here you can kinda do the same thing you can either do it through a sequence or you can do it through a timeline but I think it's great that um, that's a, a feature instead of um, making uh, the project one you know uh, one setting uh, you can pick the setting for each individual sequence, so I think that's great. Um, so another thing too that I want to go over is uh, track targeting. Um, this I think is a really awesome feature, and I'm just going to scroll all the way over here and show you a little bit of uh, track targeting. Now I'm working with uh, HVX footage, so it's DVC Pro HD, four channels of audio, and um, basically, okay, if you look at this now, if you just grab a clip and drop it in the timeline it ignores all the track targeting like as you can see uh, this is for the source over here and we can disable or enable it but um this this basically like it, it when you grab the uh, the clip from the source monitor here it just ignores the track targeting so you can drop it anywhere um, I it's a feature that I think um, it, a Avid has that I think it's a really great feature that uh, even when you grab and drag and drop your source targeting still um, it still works it's still uh, enabled so I think that that should be a feature that they should add to Premiere um, just to make it a little bit easier because let's say you have like a sequence like this and you have I don't know like this video up here and you want to throw like you know your video on this track but you see how it's going to overlap there so like maybe if you wanted you know um, your four audio sources to be five six seven and eight and you wanted your video source to be video one so you can't really do that by dragging and dropping and drag and you can do it by um, just remapping these and uh, keeping the cursor in here and then uh, pressing the comma button on the keyboard so that's kinda cool but um, or pressing the period for um, overlay instead of insert um, but that's kinda cool but it, it is kinda nice to see you know where you're dragging and dropping stuff so I think that you know um, that's a nice little feature that uh, that Avid has that I think um, Adobe should implement into Premiere um, another thing too with track targeting uh, that I like, um, and I like, actually like this better than Avid, because with Avid you have to kind of drag your track and then point an arrow at your targeted track. Over here in Premiere, you can just grab it and bring it up to this little square, and I think that's a little bit easier because when you have like small tracks like this and you're trying to like you know put the arrow on it, it's a little bit of a pain. It's not a big deal, but um, this just makes it a little bit easier. Something else that I think Adobe should implement is. Um, the ability to maybe like lasso two of these so you can grab two of them at once because as it is right now you can only grab one target at once so I think it would be good if um, you know you can grab multiple ones just say I wanted uh, to move from seven to eight over here I wanted these to be three and four I have to move each one individually so I think it, it'll be great if um, you know they, they had some kind of feature where um, you can outline both of them like lasso them or something like that and then drag them. Um, another thing in the timeline is that with Vegas you can kinda like drag this audio one down to anywhere you want pretty much so it'll like just the way you like you can do here it'll uh, 
you know, you can do that. Like you can grab the the source and put it on top of this one, and then it moves audio too. Um, I wish you could do that with these tracks, so that you know you, you're not stuck with, um, you know, you're like, oh shit, I wish I had, um, you know, these tracks down here for some reason. Um, you would have to cut and paste, and that's kind of a pain. So like, you'd have to do that for the entire track, meaning you would have to select this, cut. Select which track you want it to go to, which I would say like seven and eight, and then paste it down there, which I'm not really a big fan of. Um, I think uh, that you should be able to drag tracks around as you can in uh, Sony Vegas. That would be a really nice um, little feature. Um, Another thing, uh, too, is uh, this is a feature that I like. You see this little film strip here. You can just grab that, and that's just the video. And then you can grab the audio, too. This little audio icon, grab that, and that's just the audio. So I think that's a really cool little feature that, uh, that um, Adobe put in there. Um, it wasn't in previous versions. You would have to hit Tab, I think. Or, or actually, there was a little button here where you'd have to toggle it. Here, it's a, it's a lot faster. So if you just want the video, you just grab it, drag it in, and that's it. So track targeting with uh, insert and overlay, um, as you saw, what I did before was, um, you know, you can you can say, okay, since this has four channels of audio, um, you can say usually for the HVX uh, channels th um, three and four are kind of useless because they're the onboard mic, so you can just turn them off here. So even if these are on and you insert them, you still don't get channels three and four. Uh, which is a nice little feature, or you could do it the opposite way, because now you're saying, I want Audio 3 to map to this, but if this isn't highlighted, these tracks, it still does the same thing. If they were highlighted, you get those tracks. So I think that's a nice little feature. Another cool thing is that you can select multiple audio tracks and video tracks. In, in uh, Adobe Premiere CS3, you couldn't do that. You'd only select one, and then if you, you know click on another one, it would unhighlight one of them the one that's selected and then highlight the other one. So I think it's kind of cool and obviously you kind of need this for track targeting. Another cool thing is that um, if you cut and paste, so I'm just going to uh, take this and do uh, copy and then you can kind of choose which track you want to paste to by selecting the uh, the audio tracks here. So if I just turn this off and then uh, I want it on video 3, all you have to do is, is paste it which I hit control V there so um, it pasted it onto the uh, you know the targeted tracks which is kinda cool um, I always thought you know that's a, that's a nice little feature another thing real quick that I um, really uh, dislike about um, pretty much every program out there which includes Final Cut, Premiere and Avid is that when you grab this this group of footage and you drag it you see the contents, like the waveform and everything, uh, the contents of the, the, the instance in the timeline, it disappears. So that's kind of a pain in the ass, because if you want to like line up certain things, you can't really do that. You know what I mean? So um, if you want to line up, let's say, this audio spike with this one, and I'm just going to delete those two for now. Um, it's kind of a pain because like you're sitting here and you're going, okay, well, how do I line this up? You can't really see the waveform there. So it's kind of a pain. Um, you could, you know, put your mouse over it and then drag and click and you can kind of line it up that way. But that's kind of a pain. It's really nice to just see, you know, it's nice to just be able to grab it anywhere and go, okay, well, let me line these up. But you can't do that here because, you know, the contents disappear. So, um, you know, if I do a little side by side comparison here, Sony Vegas and Premiere, you can see that as you drag these things back and forth, the Adobe Premiere ones disappear and um, the Vegas ones, you know, the contents don't disappear. So I think that's a really great feature that I think um, should be implemented into Premiere. Alright guys, Paul DeVecchio, Tripoli Productions, those are a few things that I liked about uh, Premiere, also some things that I, you know, disliked and I hope that they would improve. Um, I'm also going to be covering in part two uh, match frame and sub clipping and, you know, things like that. So uh, stay tuned for that, that's coming up very shortly, and also stay tuned for ones for Avid and Vegas. Once again, Paul DeVecchio, Tripoli Productions, we're going to have some cool stuff coming up, so uh, stay tuned. I'll see you guys next time.
All right, guys. So those were a few things that I liked and disliked about uh, Premiere. Um, those were a few things that um, I liked about... All right, guys. So... Oh, Once again, Paul Dovecchio, Tripoli Productions.